Hey, what's up you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and today I thought I would make a new kind of video, which is going to be going over all of the real world news that's going on at Roger Williams Park Zoo. So there's been a bunch of new things that have been popping up at the zoo recently, and I thought, you know what, let's just cover it. So without further ado, let's just kind of get started. So the brand new addition to Roger Williams Park Zoo are these two guys. So we have br two brand new male wildebeest, blue wildebeest, that will be joining our African savanna habitat alongside our zebra as well as Watusi or Ancoli cattle. And these boys are uh, beautiful. They're absolutely uh, amazing creatures. Today was their first day on the yard, so they are uh, just getting acclimated to their habitat. They have the Watusi and Zebra in their backstage uh, stable area. They can still see each other, smell each other, etc. But they wanted to give the, the two guys the time on the yard, get familiar with the habitat, etc. But these guys look really, really good. Our last will to be Skittles, I believe, is no longer with us, unfortunately. And so uh, these guys are definitely a really good replacement. Skittles kind of had a little bit of issue with being bullied by some of the zebras and stuff on her own um, when her other uh, partner died. So um, these two guys definitely will uh, seemingly hold their own against the zebras. The Watusi will help them out to you know stop any issues. But these guys, their horns are probably three times larger than Skittles ever were. So I am very, very excited to uh, see these guys in the future. Our four cheetah sisters, who are neighbors to these guys, have actually been really active ever since they've been out on the yard. They're really, really interested in peeking through the chain link to see what's up. They definitely are aware of each other. The wildebeest don't really care because they're like, well, you can't get to us. But the cheetahs are definitely actively trying, though they've always tried this with the zebras and past wildebeest and stuff. They try to get through the fence, but no matter what, they just can't. So it's really interesting, though, because they get super, super active. This is the first time they've had new animals in that exhibit for a while now, so the cheetahs are very, very interested in the new guys. So definitely check it out if you can in the next few days because the cheetahs are going to be super, super active as they kind of get used to them being right next door. So uh, the next big update is the albino alligator habitat is finally open, uh, kind of unofficially. So the official day of the albino alligator habitat, now named Shades of Nature, is going to be Memorial Day, so on the uh, next Monday, essentially. But they had a sneak preview today that uh, myself as a few other people got to go and see. Whoever was available to uh, go to the zoo today uh, got a little bit of a sneak preview of the habitat and it looks amazing. It's got uh, several different animals. So at first we thought it was only the albino alligator, but there actually are a few other little habitats. So uh, just going over, we have uh, the albino alligator in the main habitat. The alligator is a female and her name is Elsa, which made many, many five-year-old girls who visited today very happy to see her. Elsa is going to be at the zoo temporarily between Memorial Day and Labor Day before in true Rhode Island form heading back to Florida for the winter. And it's kind of a really cool habitat. It's got this kind of bayou swamp theme to it and it looks great. It's some of the best theming I've ever seen at Roger Williams and it looks really, really nice. So props to the uh, zoo. We were supposed to get this alligator last Memorial Day, but due to the pandemic, obviously, things got delayed, but the actual habitat looks really, really nice. So joining the albino alligator, we actually have a couple of smaller exhibits. So we have another albino animal, the albino black rat snake. So this is going to be a brand new snake species that's going to be uh, joining the zoo, which is really, really cool. I know Julie loves snakes, and this is definitely going to be uh, one of her favorite habitats for sure. And then similarly, we have uh, regular, normal baby alligators that are in another t kind of terrarium next to the rat snake and main albino alligator exhibit. And all of these animals are currently on a loan, so they are not going to be permanent additions to the zoo. Uh, and they are mostly going to be available only during the summer seasons, 
I, I talked to some of the keepers. They are going to be loaned out. Basically, every season we'll, we have contacts with other zoos throughout the country, and they're willing to kind of let us uh, loan a lot of our animals that we'll be seeing in the next couple of months. Now, in other news that will be happening soon, we also have two brand new ostriches that we will be getting very shortly. They've already arrived at the zoo, and they're currently just uh, ending their quarantine period. And surprisingly, they're actually going to be placed in with the Owdad. So we have one Owdad left, and uh, it's kind of a surprise that they actually chose to put the ostriches in the Owdad enclosure. I think a lot of us thought that they might have put them in the savanna habitat alongside the Watusi and Zebra and Wildebeest. We used to have them back in the day in that habitat, and so it only would have made sense to put them there. But it's actually interesting, because for a while now, our last Owdad probably doesn't have too much longer so it's likely that that habitat was going to be vacant and for a while the master plan had no idea what we wanted in that habitat it just said african habitat but the great news is now we kind of know at least one of the animals that they will put in it will be the ostrich which is really really exciting the ostrich weren't out today but in the next few weeks we could be seeing them on exhibit so that will be very very exciting um I know, I know the public will be very excited to have ostrich back at the zoo. Rounding out Africa, we could also discuss another thing that the zoo has been attempting. We are trying to get baby giraffes again. So we have our 11-year-old male, Jaffa, and he is trying to uh, basically uh, become a dad. So our, we have a female who is about four or five years old named Cora and our obviously big male giraffe Jaffa are basically just trying to mate. So we've been gauging interest um, over the last few days. I checked in with them yesterday as well as today. It's not looking great, not gonna lie. Um, they've definitely been trying, but kind of failing to um, kind of do the deed as it were. But fingers crossed, we can hopefully see that kind of change and we will be Hopefully seeing some baby giraffes in the next year or so. That would be very, very exciting for the zoo because I know how much the zoo public loves our baby giraffes. In other news, the zoo is also attempting to try to breed our two tree kangaroos, Marobi and LaRue, to hopefully have some offspring by maybe next year. So fingers crossed we could see some baby tree kangaroos because the public loves them as well. Relating to snow leopards, we actually also seem to have a brand new snow leopard. So we shipped out our female, uh, who was Sabu, our male snow leopard sister, out a few months ago for breeding purposes. But if we checked in today, uh, there's another snow leopard in that habitat, which means I'm not sure if it's public yet, but it would appear like we seem to have another snow leopard, possibly another female, for breeding purposes to mate with Sabu. So baby snow leopards would really bring in crowds. So it definitely seems like next year we are planning on having a lot of babies, fingers crossed. Any Roger Williams news update wouldn't be complete without addressing the brand new zoo mask policy. So the zoo has chosen to listen to Rhode Island's brand new legislation that basically states that if you are fully vaccinated, you do not need to wear a mask. So that is great news. So if you're not vaccinated, you do not wear, need to wear a mask throughout the majority of the zoo. Faces of the Rainforest still requires a mask due to the primates in the building that are kind of free roaming and they are able to get the virus, of course. So you are still required to wear a mask in that building specifically, but all other restrictions have seemingly been lifted. The zoo is basically back to how it was pre-COVID. All buildings are open, all exhibit entrances are open. So I remember the cheetah and the zebra. Secondary entrances were closed off. Now they're no longer, you know, bordered up. Similarly, the Snake Den as well as World of Adaptations are open year-round, so you can now just go in there without any kind of special date or anything, so that's really, really nice. And yeah, so like I said, Faces of the Rainforest is the only one where you have to actually wear a mask right now, but all other parts of the zoo are completely open. So that is great news if you are someone who is kind of wanting to get back to the standard Roger Williams experience. 
Speaking of world of adaptations, we can kind of address the cutest little additions to the zoo. The brand new otter pups are finally kind of grown up and they're old enough now to be outside in on exhibit with their mother and they are absolutely adorable. We have four little babies that run around with their mother and they they basically follow her. They run around in like a little puddle of cuteness and go in the water and play with the rocks. They're really, really fun to watch if you get go to the zoo. Definitely recommend you go check those out because they are absolutely the cutest thing in the world. Most of the animals have been sneezing like crazy lately due to the amount of pollen that's been in the air. I know that Bubba, our resident harbor seal, is really cute. He's been like sneezing up a storm lately because he has so many pine needles and pollen in his habitat. And then similarly, I also saw the Takins were also kind of having a sneezing fit because it is crazy how much pollen there has been this season. Last thing that is kind of noteworthy is we are expecting our Bactrian camels any day now. So we have Bactrian camels on loan from Philadelphia Zoo and they have given us a one-year loan of Bactrian camels to go in place of our dromedary camel habitat due to the unfortunate passing of Gina last year. So that habitat will soon be uh, you know, home to two new Bactrian camels. We are going to have them on a one-year loan period that we will keep renewing with different zoos to get new camels each year until the zoo feels comfortable to pursue our plans for the master plan to eventually renovate that habitat to be for our tiger exhibit. So from what I have been told, everything that is part of the master plan is still in play, even though seemingly the newer animals seem to kind of contradict that. So all of the animals, the wildebeest, the camels, uh, the alligator, etc., don't interfere with the stuff like the education building or the sea lion pool or the tiger habitat or any of that. All of those are still planned down the line. In the immediate future though, the zoo is just trying to fill those areas the best that we can. I got news from one of the keepers that said the next big phase is going to be kind of reinventing World of Adaptations to be a big islands exhibit, which I believe was the plan to get kangaroos back. So seemingly by saying islands exhibit that seems like maybe the babarusa and binturong might be safe and that means that the kangaroo walkabout that was seemingly going to replace the entire area might be slightly different and it might only maybe go into the wallaby habitat and the bennett's wallaby and kangaroo will just be together don't quote me on that we have no idea yet but the plan was to have the new new and improved islands exhibit completed by around 2022-2023. So that is going to be the zoo's next big project now that Faces is out, and so that is very exciting. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Um, let me know if you guys enjoy some of these kind of real-life Roger Williams vlog-style content, and uh, yeah, so if you guys enjoy them, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.